Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The FC25 news keeps on coming. Yesterday, EA dropped the first pitch notes of the year for this game, and it brought with it some more controversial information. I want to break down the most three controversial additions to FC25 and how people are reacting to some of the stuff that EA is releasing. Let's talk about it, guys. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Firstly, in this Pitch Notes article, you see that there are more deep dives coming. And to preface all of this, we need these deep dives really badly because right now it feels like we have mostly just rumors, some things that are halfway confirmed, and a lot of things that are just surface level in the terms of information, especially on like Rush and some of the things on Ultimate Team and in gameplay, of course, as well with FCIQ. Hopefully we get some more of these pitch notes and deep dives very, very soon. But let's get into the three things that are the most controversial. So the first thing of FC25 that is really ruffling some feathers and causing some confusion and controversy controversy is the whole season pass and premium season pass debacle. It was leaked, not even talked about by EA Sports. It was leaked that there was going to be a premium pass. Foot Sheriff was the first one to report this. And this really, of course, created a lot of uproar in the community because it just seems like another way that EA is trying to make money. Another pay to win aspect in this game at a face value is what this sounds like, right? It shows the example here of a couple of insane cards here with XP with like the Buffon and Alvarez or whatever. This is just a graphical um, created situation of a season and what it might look like in FC 25. There's nothing there that's actually real, but the idea that a premium pass and a free pass sounds like it actually is going to be happening. Now, that was nothing that was told to the creators that went to EA. We had no idea that there was going to be different levels of the season pass. All we had known about a season pass was that there was going to be a all-inclusive pass that was going to have career mode, pro clubs, and ultimate team content inside of it so that you could get you know, progression in all the different modes, depending on what you wanted to play. And also some cool rewards for all those different spaces, which is cool and fine. But now it feels like they were holding something back from telling us that there was going to be a premium pass as well, which I also don't like as a part of this. However, on a recently discovered article on VG247.com, some EA employees themselves, producers of the game, are quoted in this article speaking about the free and the paid season pass. Let's dive into it, right? They say here that the free tier would essentially be what players are seeing today in game. A normal season pass where we level up with XP to get rewards, packs, players, etc. He says you can go back into the game and see the free tier as it would be in 24. Then the premium pass is something we're adding on top. So again, that sounds like something additional, something paid, other rewards, other players. But the next quote is, at a high level, there will be nothing in the paid tier that can't be earned in the free tier. There's no exclusive rewards that will mean that you have to do that by the paid tier. We're going to be having players packs, that sort of thing in clubs and customization options. So this quote right here makes us believe now that somehow the rewards are going to be the same, same players, same packs, same objectives to complete inside of the season. You'll get the same stuff, but there's one that's free and one that's paid. It doesn't necessarily make sense with what they're saying here. Well, here's one way that it might actually end up making sense. If the rewards are actually the same from the paid tier to the free tier, what could you be paying for? Well, you could be paying for, in essence, time. Imagine a paid tier that allowed you to get a head start or maybe like an XP multiplier that got you through the season faster and got you to those rewards at the end of the season, like this 99 Erling Holland or the Pushkas from last season that everybody was going for. Maybe it's a time-based thing. That's something that I'm considering here because again, they're making it sound like there's nothing additional in terms of rewards because everything you can get in the free tier, you can also get in the paid tier. So either it's going to take you longer to get there if you're going the free play route or uh, there's some other like paid additional stuff that's outside of the free tier that like, maybe you just get additional options but even then that doesn't really correspond with what they're saying here that the paid tier and the free tier will be kind of similar with this quote right here it almost seems like is it even worth paying for the paid tier 
with coins or FC points because it does note in that article that you could pay for either. So there's a little bit of confusion and I'm really going to be looking forward to the deep dive on Ultimate Team in early August when they probably explain some of this. Maybe during the club's deep dive even in July, they'll touch on this aspect since it does involve pro clubs as well. But that's kind of a controversial and confusing point right now because a lot of people are thinking, oh, premium season pass, more pay to win, more EA trying to get money, right? Well, is it actually going to be worth buying the, the season pass, the free or the premium one, I mean? If there's actually not going to be different rewards, if you're playing the game pretty consistently, you should be able to get those rewards anyway, right? Maybe this is EA just enabling themselves to make extra money off of people who can't play the game as consistently and still want to get to those level 40 rewards, which to an extent, I understand if it is a time-based thing, if you're gone for two weeks because you're on holiday and you miss out on the XP and the objectives, you come back and you still want that player, you have an option to get it. So if that's all that it is and there's not actually additional rewards behind the paid aspect of it, then I really don't have a problem with it. If it's just pay for time, that's fine. Could become problematic later on during the year and during times of the year where there's really cracked cards in here and EA allowed people to get those too early if they go for the premium tier paid option in the season pass, but we'll have to see how that pans out. The second most controversial thing coming to FC25 is the ability to perform professional fouls and basically grab a hold of the shirt of your opponent if they're breaking through away on goal for a goal scoring opportunity you can now hold rt and press the tackle button and it will perform a professional foul just like in real life football there are opportunities and there are places where these fouls take place and just like real life football as well it is instantly going to give you a yellow card i think a lot of the controversy and the worry with this addition to fc25 just revolves around the fact that people believe it could end up being overpowered or somehow glitched where you could find a way to continuously perform professional fouls, annoy your opponent, and really just kind of like glitch the game out by fouling your opponent all the time. I find that a little bit difficult to believe because you know, EA just added, just last year in FC24, a new way to perform tackles at a more aggressive level, right? You can perform a regular standing tackle by pressing circle on the PlayStation 5 controller. You can also do an R1 circle for a more aggressive tackle, and same thing with a slide tackle. A more aggressive slide tackle, if it wasn't aggressive enough already for you, is a R1 slide tackle. And you know what? Those additions were added in FC24, and I don't think I've used that one time during this last year. I could see this being a problem if it doesn't give yellow cards every single time or if there's a way where you can persistently keep fouling, that would be a big problem. That would be a massive problem. I'm not down playing that, but all I'm saying is this could also be something that's so irrelevant that's never talked about when the game's out because nobody will actually be doing it. Maybe the one-off time where you're trying to defend somebody who gets in on goal. So I think there's a little bit of too much kind of controversy around this one right now because I think this one might just fall by the wayside and most people won't even be talking about it in a month or two. But we'll need to see more in the gameplay deep dive. I'm really curious to see the professional fouls kind of explained more there, how it will work, maybe in different situations on the pitch and the guaranteed likelihood or however it would be with the yellow cards and the red cards potentially if you keep persistently fouling. Controversial topic number three, guys. We're talking about the 4321 and removed formations. This tweet, among many others, got people talking like crazy about the new tactic system, FC IQ, coming to FC25, and the removal of a very meta and overpowered formation in FC24, the 4321. Now, technically, this is false. I'm just being completely honest, guys. The 4321 is still a formation that's going to be in FC25, it's just maybe not going to be called the same thing because it revolves around the positions that are in a 4-3-2-1, namely the center forwards. This tweet just after from foot.gg kind of explains a little bit more about the FC25 version of the 4-3-2-1. EA has removed three positions in FC25, center forward, right wing back, and left wing back. And what they've done is they've kind of incorporated those positions into other positions in FC25 with the new FC IQ, which you might be thinking like, 
Why do they take away center forward? That's a legit position. You know, left wing back and right wing back, if you're running a five back formation, those are legit positions. Why did they take those away? Well, when you look inside of the new FCIQ tactic system, it's the role of the player, as we'll learn, and we need to learn more. They need to discuss more about FCIQ because it's really confusing to try to explain to somebody who's seen it in game. It's, ex it's confusing to explain with words. It's a lot easier to see inside of the game and actually mess around with it with a controller or watch it in a video. But with the new tactic system, it's all about the role of the player. I'm sure you guys have heard about that, right? The roles in the FCIQ system. A left back can turn into a left wing back at any time with a wing back role. I think if you actually look at the official list, if I pull it up here, of the different roles, inside of the uh, FC IQ, you will see that there is a wing back that is listed. Here we go. Right back and left back, full back, false back, which is the coolest one in my opinion, wing back and attacking wing back. So technically every right back and every left back in the game could be an attacking wing back when they're in a right or left back playing situation and starting formation in ultimate team and in FC 25. And same thing with the center forward. Now they've replaced in the 4-3-2-1, they've replaced the uh, center forward position in that squad with a center attacking mid position. And if you look at the roles of a striker and of a center attacking mid, you can get a center forward out of that with the different roles. A shadow striker, that would kind of be like a center forward or a poacher in the striker position. If you're running a two striker setup, you could actually make a 4-3-2-1 that is more like a 4-3-2-1 with the center forwards with the different tactics that you can set up. So I think there's a little bit of extra... I don't know what you would call it, but a little bit of extra controversy here because, yeah, sure, the 4-3-2-1 is a 4-3-2-1, and technically you've got cams instead of center forwards. But if you put center forward-like players in this position, or maybe if you choose a totally different formation and just use the custom tactics of FCIQ to get yourself kind of three striker slash center forward players at the top of the formation, it's still going to be possible. I mean, that's probably what one of the first things people are going to do in FC 25 is find a way to recreate this formation as closely as they can because this 4-3-2-1 has been the most OP formation in the entirety of FC24. And I think that's why there's a lot of hype around this. But I do believe that some of the face value tweets and stuff like this is technically a little bit controversial and untrue in a way just because of the new tactic system and how it works but at a face value yes the, f the center forward positions are not there anymore and that's why there's a lot of people talking about the 4-3-2-1 and this controversial feature. So those are our top three most controversial things but I want to throw in a fourth for an added bonus at the end. In the new pitch notes that EA dropped they talk about division rivals rewards and also how the new point system is going to work but this is the most controversial part about it the legacy division placement aspect of this because i think some people are reading this and thinking that if i was in elite division then i'm going to be placed in elite division at the start of fc25 that is not true let's break it down really quick they said don't think your progress has gone unnoticed in fc25 your starting division in Rivals will take into account your highest division that you achieved in FC24. This adjustment will help you get to a well-suited division faster, earn higher tier rewards quicker, and help ensure our new players aren't matching against sweats, basically. But this is how it works, right? Your starting division in Rivals will take into account where you were in FC24. So it's not saying that you will be in Elite Division if you were in Elite Division. Remember every single year of other years of FC or FIFA, we would start in Division 10. I think there was one year where they played uh, placement matches. You had five placement matches to try to get yourself up a little bit, depending on how many you won and where you played. That would maybe even set you up a little bit higher as your start in Division Rivals. I think that's what this is. If you got to the Division 1 or to the Elite Division in FC 24, then you're probably going to be placed somewhere in division, I don't know, five. I feel like division five would be the highest place that they would place people for the start of a brand new year because they want there to be a bit of a grind and a bit of progression. And that's also part of division rivals as well is in the early game, trying to grind up the ranks, see how good you are, learn the new game and get some of the best rewards, which of course they have mentioned with division rivals, even though it's a points-based system this year, which is, I think, better than 
the system that we have right now because you get rewarded for the draws. Very excited about that. But uh, the rewards will be based out more and spread out more. So it'll be worth actually trying to get up to Division 2, Division 1, and to really test yourself and um, get the highest rank you possibly can for the better rewards. So again, that's another thing where we're going to have to wait and see how it plays out and how it actually works. And especially, I'm really curious to see how many points are they going to let us or make us grind to for the weekly rewards or the reward upgrade, right? In FC24, it's three wins for weekly rewards, and it's four more, seven wins total for the reward upgrade. That would be 21 points under the new points system. But since they're giving you points for draws in there, are they going to make it like 24 points and make you get that extra couple of points with draws kind of calculated in? I hope not. But I could see something like that happening, maybe even like 24 or 25 points. Like, honestly, I could see it happening. So I'm excited to see an Ultimate Team deep dive kind of explaining this a little bit more. I think overall the Rivals change is a good one. But I'm thinking that could be a little bit controversial as well related to the legacy placement. And really, it's just kind of a confusion in understanding how that's going to work. Now, just to go through a couple of the last things from this Pitch Notes article that we haven't discussed yet, you may have already heard about this, but the SBC storage, EA showed us our first screenshot of the duplicate storage in FC25. It looks like the unassigned menu is not even changing. It's basically the transfer list, the items that you're going to assign, and the quick sell. There must be another button that is kind of associated to sending cards to your untradeable duplicate storage. As you can see here, it's kind of like one of those in-game messages that says, are you sure you want to send these? cards to your untradeable duplicate storage and then it says yes and i'm imagining they're just going to float up and go away and they'll be in that storage and when you go to an sbc they will be there i'm really curious to know and i'm sure we're going to hear more about this too where do you access your duplicate storage will it be under the transfers tab by your transfer list or will it be like in the club tab maybe or maybe even it's only during sbcs can you like actually access and see how many players you have. It does show in this graphic, it's hard to see, but there's a zero of 100 on this little duplicate storage kind of text behind. It's kind of um, minimized. It's kind of behind because this big um, notifications in front of it, but it does say zero of 100. So maybe when you open a pack and you have an untradeable duplicate, it'll show you how many you have. Uh, and that's how you can see who's in it. I'm just wondering where that actual storage will be in the menus of the game. Moving on, evolution requirements. They mentioned that evolutions, of course, are going to be bigger this year in terms of the of player items being able to fit into evolutions. Again, we really just need the ultimate team deep dive, which is mentioned here, to really get a more kind of grasp on what these new features are going to mean in some of the areas. But the biggest news of yesterday with this new pitch notes dropping is that contracts will no longer be needed. And that's another thing that they are taking out of packs as pack filler. I remember when they took fitness cards out um, and other position change cards out of the game. They've been on a kind of a spree now for like the past three or four years, slightly removing something and something else every single year so that it's more players in packs. But also they've been adding in like more TFOs and more customization items. And of course, with them removing contracts, which had a pretty high quick sell value, like I bet if I went to my club right now and took a look at all of the contracts that were in my club, I bet I could make a couple thousand coins, maybe even more than that from all of the uh, items that I have. I don't even know where to find those now because I haven't looked in ages. But like, you know, you used to quick sell contracts and you can quick sell them by the loads now and get a bunch of coins. Well, that's not going to happen now in FC25 because those will no longer be needed and they won't be in packs. But I'm sure EA is going to change the pack weight somehow to add in more of those kind of filler pack items to see um, or to kind of take over for the fodder that was there with the contracts. A little bit of gameplay additions of news from yesterday's pitch notes as well as goalkeeper movement. I think this one's welcomed by just about everybody. It's at least a positive change for how overpowered goalkeeper movement has been in FC24. You can obviously tell that the steps, as it says, you can only move one to two steps in any direction when you're doing goalkeeper movement and there's a cool down period after you move to prevent this moves these moves from being overused repeatedly which i totally think is good because in fc24 you can just move your keeper like all the time and they move so fast unrealistically fast for how goalkeepers are going to move and still be trying to protect the area around the net so i think this is a welcome change again we're going to have to see how it actually pans out speaking of goalies 
corner kicks, right? We concede corner kicks all of the time. This little screenshot here actually shows and confirms that you can now positionally place players in certain positions on a corner kick, just like you used to be able to choose who's taking the corner kick. They've added three new instructions. You can choose who takes the kick. You can choose the target player, the front post, and the back post. Shown here in this graphic, you can see they have Darwin as the target, Van Dyke at the near post, and Konate at the back post. So you've got Van Dyke uh, up here at the near post. You've got Darwin Nunez kind of at the six yard box closest to the keeper. This is like where everybody puts Weghorst right now in FC24. And then you've got Konate at the back post back here. So you can control four things. Who's taking the kick, the front post, back post, and the target player. That's cold. This actually is kind of like your first initial uh, picture as well. The first picture that EA has posted into FCIQ. Like, I wish I could just press LB or L1 and go over to the tactic session uh, section and we could see all the FCIQ stuff. But we're probably going to see that here pretty soon because that is going to be our first deep dive into uh, gameplay. That's going to be our first deep dive that's going to be released. And hopefully that comes really, really soon. Now for the last couple topics inside of this pitch notes, we have clubs and we have career modes, which will get their own deep dives as well. There's really not a whole lot of there that I want to go into. And then of course they talk about feedback and live updates down here at the bottom. If you want to read a little bit of a yap sesh, really guys, we're waiting for that ultimate team deep dive and the gameplay deep dive. I'm glad gameplay comes first. Um, but a lot of the things that they released in this pitch notes yesterday, you know, it, it did answer some questions, I think, but also it added a little bit of confusion. I'm really, again, waiting to hear what this season pass looks like. I'm really curious for the ultimate team deep dive for that. Really curious to see professional fouls in the gameplay deep dive and then the instructions in FCIQ for some of the most controversial things. I'm just ready for EA to kind of squash all the rumors and all of the speculation and just show us how it's actually going to look. Which one of those things that we pointed out today are you the most worried about? coming to FC 25 as those new features. Maybe it's the paid season pass because you're like, I don't want to have to spend coins or FC points, hopefully not, but coins on something else like an XP sort of objective season pass. Or maybe you're worried about the new professional fouls or the whole tactics thing seems confusing to you and you're going to miss the 4-3-2-1 of old and maybe worried about how you can recreate it again. Which one of those? Let me know down in the comments. But that's another FC 25 news video for us today, guys. I will catch you in another one soon as we get more information. Thank you guys for watching the videos on the channel. And if you did enjoy it, smash a thumbs up on it. I will see you guys in the next one. It's been Nathan with Catch you there. Peace.